Good morning. Yes, we already we are. You're gonna hear that again for the real footage of the video. I'm just putting this at the start. I thought of this at the, at the end of it to um. Just it, it, whoever wanted to just see the picture and doesn't want to hear the explanation, here it is, man. So you're welcome. Have a good day. Peace. Good morning. There you go, YouTube viewers. I did it quietly. Okay, we're doing a Briar matchup guide. Uh, we're just gonna keep it pushing. Try and keep it short and sweet because this stuff takes a while. So if you're in it for the long haul. I appreciate you. So we're going to start with the easiest tiers, which are the matchups that you lose. They're fairly simple. We can move all of these, and we're actually just going to talk about them all at once. So these three in particular, what they're going to do is they all have one thing in common, which is they have flash on a basic cooldown. Grave says E, Kindred Q, Nidalee, uh, Cougar Form W. And they're going to be jumping walls, annoying you, invading, and they're just going to... Be able to choose more spots than you. They can choose to fight you in your jungle. They can choose to fight you at a counter gank. They have high movement speed. They're always going to be around. So the main thing to look out for for these champs is that if their team is good and they invade you at a correct time or like when their top or mid has prio, then their laner is going to converge on you and now you're going to be fighting a 2v1 and your laner is going to be in a situation where they have to choose help my jungler or get my own wave and you know what they're going to pick. They're going to pick their wave. So these three are going to put you in weird situations where you have to decide between do I give the camp to them, I go bot and then they gank my top, or you know some variation of that where they're going to fight you for the camp, and if you get the camp, you, you get your own camp and then you get away, that's good. You just have to do that for a few minutes, and then as mid game hits, you can start playing it. But these champs snowball super hard, they punish bad laning, and everyone knows laners are terrible. So... All things considered, these three champs are just going to, uh, they're going to be everywhere, and you're going to have to pick your spots of when to fight them super well. You have to look at your teammates, see if they can walk, because your team will get prior sometime, right? So, that's the plan for those, is you just have to really be flexible. You have to know what camps to give up. You need to know how to counter, counter jungle super well. If they gank bot, you take their top. Don't be too scared to walk in and get there. They're not going to catch you. They can't magically spawn next to you. So, if their team is good... Hard lose. Hard lose if their team is good, you hard lose these. Now, let's go with um, some harder matchups. Elise is your hardest matchup because of you, let's say, well, the, the problem is she has two answers to you in every form. She has an answer to you in every form, so she has two answers. So, if you frenzy towards her, she's going to human form EU. If she ever gets close to dying, she's going to repel up on spider form E. And both of those options change frenzy because... Cocoon's either going to buy enough time for her to walk away or Repel's going to drop Frenzy altogether. She's going to go somewhere else, like hop to a, you know, a blasting cone and then you're out the cooldown. Didn't didn't damage her at all. The only thing that you can really do for this matchup is full charge E and then try and kill her on a wall slam and even then she might still live because she gets some health items uh, through some of the AP items. <clears throat> all in all, you need a path away from her and then get strong enough to fight her. But early game, you need to not be on the screen near her. And that's what makes the game tough is she's a good three camp jungler. She can also full clear. So she's going to be picking spots. And a lot of the time, you can't really deal with it. And especially with how good Cocoon is with a teammate. Like if she's pathing to a Renekton or a Nautilus, they're going to flash on you, stun you. She's going to chain and then you die. Even if you buffer D, you're going to take too much damage. So, yeah, so she rolls you in the matchup. It is what it is. That's probably the hardest matchup to me, and it's not even close. Sorry, I'm a little nasally today, but we're getting through it. Okay, now you have... Um, let's add another tier. Really quick. We're going to do full clear. So you've... Let's go with Karthus. This is a heavy... This is an insane matchup. So... How this one works is... Karthus is going to do camps way faster than you. He has like a three minute, actually, let's put Brand in here too. We're Brand. These two champs are going to do camps so much faster than you. They have three minute full clears with Leash. Like, they're going to be 30 seconds up on their full clear on you every game. So what that means is they're going to hit a three minute full clear. They're going to gank before you because you're going to be level three on your sixth camp. And they're going to be already ganking at level four. They're going to take the crab, maybe even double crab you. And then they're going to reset do it again, do it again, and even if you had 1k gold over them, they can still do that game plan. They're going to just keep clearing, keep clearing. 
Karthus and Brand, they're gonna do their second full clear. They're gonna do drag. They're gonna solo it, and it's not even gonna be close. So you have to find specific spots with your team so well, or these people are just gonna snowball over you. There's nothing you can do about it. Now we're gonna put Hecarim in that tier. Hecarim does the same thing, and even we can add. Where's he at? Udir does this. So yeah, I guess I could have just done it like this. Fid does this. Gwen does this. So all these champs have this this playstyle where all of them have a way faster full clear than you. They're going to try and gank before you. And then they're going to reset, do it again, do drag, and then just stay so high tempo. And tempo is like your time. Tempo means like your time doing something. They're always going to be doing something. If it be full clear, gank, reset. Full clear, gank, reset. And how fast they clear and how fast they get that gank that I'm referring to off is they can do all that in the, like if they clear Krugs down to Gromp. By the time for them to go clear those camps, get that gank and recall, their Krugs haven't even spawned yet. So they're always doing something. And that's what makes it really tough. Now in terms of the matchup, you can try and fight Karth... Like I'll just quickly go over these. Karthus usually takes exhaust against you. So if you go in, he's going to exhaust you. And then he's actually just going to burn you out with damage. You can try and E him away. That's pretty good. Karthus players want you to kill them so that they can kill your team. But some of them feed super hard because they don't understand that you don't always have to tactically die as Karthus. So the idea would be to find good spots where he oversteps trying to do that full clear thing. Post up in some of his jungle bushes. Post up in river for crabs and just work it out. Always E his R and you'll be fine. Brand is the same thing. You have to, You either have to be killing his team or you have to bring the fight to him. Because he's going to full clear past you, and you're going to fall behind just by the matchup. Now, Hecarim isn't as bad as these two, but I don't want to have too many tiers. So we're just going to slide him down. He's full clear, but their favor. Where you can you can fight Hecarim. As long as you don't put too much damage into his W, you're actually in a spot to, to one-shot him at almost every point in the game. Especially with full charge E. Full charge E, you one-tap Hecarim every time. The problem is he's going to have level advantage, he's going to get 6 first, and then you have to make your plays. Now one of the best things that you can do is when you see him, you know, you want to counter gank versus hacker him. So if you see him making a play, running behind your teammate, stun him right there, behind your teammate, right as his E is about to go out. He loses the E, which is the empowered auto, and takes your teammate behind, and then you can do a huge burst of damage. Because he probably used W going in, it probably ran out. So you just... Pick your spots to stun him or just kill his team. Udir is similar where you just have to pick your spots. You have to watch out for Empowered E where he'll just bypass your CC. Um, but all in all, he's looking to full clear front line for his team. You're looking to kill his team. So if you're killing Udir first, he has to be 0-5. But generally speaking, just try and stay up in camps. You don't take the fight to him as much here. You look to just have solid gameplay. Counter jungle when it's good. Clear your camps, you know, fast and efficiently, and and gank to get your get yourself fed. Fiddle's a weird one. Fiddle's actually like one of the more uh, interactive ones, which is weird. But you have two CCs, and he has he kind of has two. He has a silence and a fear, and you have stun plus uh, knockback. Whoever plays this one better with their cooldowns will usually win the matchup. So like, if you're if you WQ, if you E and you like miss it and then you W and then you Q and then he fears you and then he R's, you're going to die, right? He dropped your frenzy. He, you have no cooldowns. You have no damage reduction. He's going to one tap you. Now, if you start the fight with W and then he Q's you, you're actually able to time it out and then you Q on top of him and then you W2 and then E him, you can definitely like play it. So you got to save your cooldowns to interact with him as he needs to do it to you. If he wastes all of his cooldowns, if he QEs you, and then you WQ onto him, you're gonna beat you're gonna beat him down. So better player wins here. Look to cancel drain with your Q, or just E his drain, and uh, the matchup's fine. Better player wins here. Gwen Gwen's just going to so Gwen's really weak early, but she's gonna full clear and get super strong late game. So the idea here is that you want to take the fight to her. You want to try and break up her full clear. You can always fight her early game. Be careful about her W dropping Frenzy. Because they're outside the circle, you won't be able to target her. So you're going to drop Frenzy. But um, all in all, you can fight her most of the times of the game. 
until she gets like three items. Around three items, she just destroys her whole team. But you have everything you need early game to do it. Uh, just try and find her. Nocturne's in that same group, but I'm going to put Nocturne in the hard lose. Sorry. Dude, I'm super nasally. Who lost? Alright, let's do Nocturne. So Nocturne, he's going to full clear, so he almost makes the full clear spot. But he's going to play it a little differently where he can always fight you. Um, he is he has spell shield to break your combo up and then he actually just times you out in the fight So you can fight him for the first five seconds. He can fight you for six seconds on Because you're on a timer with his fear. So what happens when he fears you is The moment that he tethers on to you, you have to make the decision to can I win the fight or not and he We'll probably try and spell shield your Q, so you only have W. So you have only W to try and kill a full Nocturne. It's pretty unrealistic, but you have counterplay to the matchup where you can smite away a spell shield, stun him. So like you could, you can W towards him, he uses spell shield, you can smite Q, W2 and then E, and that could be a kill because it'll knock him away, break the tether, and then also he'll be stunned for 1.5 and then you can just hit your second W and kill him. Um... Better player wins this. He will mess up your R because he's going to take vision away. And his R is just a better version of yours because it's point and click. All in all though, um, as long as you play around his fear well. And look to smite, excuse me. As long as you look to smite Q him to break the spell shield, it's playable. But all in all, he just has to do so much less than you and he wins. So, And it's so much easier for him to win. So, Nocturne at least... Hardest matchups. Now we're gonna do a little grouping. Actually, let's do hard. Uh, if if their team is good, Lee Sin's going to do the same thing as those people where he can jump any wall, he can choose his spots, he can, you know, if you're if you don't have E, you can Q R Q U to one tap. If you're going lethal, it's gonna kill you every time. Um, you can win the matchup if he doesn't do damage. So the thing about Lee Sin, at the state he's in right now, if he makes one or two mistakes in a game. He's out of that game forever. So the problem is, is even there ahead, Lee Sin can make any mistake against you. It doesn't matter. But if he makes one or two mistakes and you get ahead, he's not only a cannon minion to your team, but he's a cannon minion to you. So if their team is good, you can't do anything against him. They're going to perma invade you. He's going to pick his fights on your camps. His team's going to walk. It's going to be annoying. You can never truly catch him unless you get full charge E. Uh, he's going to jump a wall and you're going to be depressed. Now we got do some more. So this is another full clear one. The Lilia matchup isn't as bad. So again, these are slightly ordered, right? These are ordered in this way where, um, you know, Karthus would be the hardest full clear and Lilia would be one of the easiest because you can almost always one tap a Lilia. You do so much damage. So like you, you're going to WQ. She is a lot of movement speed. You're going to do your three autos. You're going to W2. She's you're, and then you're going to charge E. She's going to run away, try and look for you. Maybe you don't even E away, but all in all, as long as you don't feed into her max range Qs, you're going to be fine. And your burst combo does enough to just kill her every time. Kane is going in front of Lilia. He's the same thing. He's going to look to full clear. His full clear is not as bad as theirs. It's still good. But his thing is that he can walk through walls. That's broken. So as, as Nidalee Graves can hop over walls, he walks through them. Um, but all in all, the matchup's like pretty easy, I'll say. You can almost always kill him. He can't ever really kill you. Like if you, if you play your combo correctly, where you WQ him, even if he's in a wall, he's going to drop out. You can do so much burst to him where he has to panic R and then you E his R damage. And then he either has to run away or try and burst you out. You can just use your second W of that fight, dodge his next W and you can play it out. So hopefully that made sense, but generally speaking, you want to burst him, force him to R, and then you E his R, and then you kill him with the next WQ. That's it. And that applies to both forms. If he goes red and he's super tanky, he's probably just a cannon minion outside of a knockup anyway. Red form's really bad right now too, so there's not much he can do. Okay, now let's go with um, let's go with their favor. We're gonna go with Poppy. So Poppy W counters your whole kit. But also, the champ is like a cannon minion if you don't feed into it. So if you W towards her, she Ws, you just do nothing but auto. Wait for it to go down, and then at the end of it, Q, W, 2. 
you're gonna just destroy her in the matchup. If you ever see, if you ever think she's gonna E you, you can just buffer E into the wall. You're gonna slam her and not take that much damage, so you're fine. Uh, the only way that you get destroyed is if she's making plays onto you, where she's eating you into the wall, and then she's able to hold W on top of you while you have to run away. That's when it gets rough. So, so it's only slightly their favor. But all in all, it's easier for her to make the play where she EQs you and then holds W on top of you than it is for you to W, wait out her W, and then QW2. Just because she probably you know ran under turret, ran to a teammate, did something like that. So that's in their favor. Okay, next up, let's do, let's do some more weird ones. Let's do Xin Zhao is their favor. And I only say that. Usually you want people to come to you and fight you because you, you just destroy them. You burst out their their combo. You like counter burst it with E. It is what it is. Zinzao is able to do just slightly enough damage where you can't always fight him, and your team can't always help you because he's going to R. So usually Briar wins matchups of someone walking towards him because she's gonna stun you. She's gonna stun them. So Briar's gonna stun you when you're close to me, and now. My team does the extra 100 damage that I need, and then I win the fight. Well, for Zindao, you don't get that extra 100 damage, and he beats your ass. And his team can auto you the whole time. So, all in all, it's slightly their favor. If you ever get ahead, you just kill him a million times. Alright, so I think Jarvan is a hard win for us, because if he ever EQs you, you charge E, and then he has nothing. If he ever R's you, you charge E, and then you knock him into his own wall. You beat his ass in every 1v1 fight. The only thing he can do is 3 camp or just get a ton of ganks off early when you're not as strong. And then be strong enough to beat you by item advantage. So like if you recall, you only get like, you know, boots, longsword, and he gets iron spike whip, he's going to beat your ass. Not a lot of Jarvins are taking the phase rush build. Uh, I think the phase rush build destroys Briar, but no one doesn't. So everyone's going to go conquer and um and try and fight you and try and you know outlast outlast your combo uh you you win that every time okay this video is going long so we're gonna stop giving as many details and just come to my stream and ask or something uh their favor is ramus uh so like the idea is that if he ever taunts you you should have already been buffering e to get him away and not be autoing during that because cc doesn't break your e so that's a pretty good one the moment that his W runs out, you're going to WQ towards him and kill him like any other champ. It's not that hard. Um, he's going to play to kill your team more than you. And if you play 2v2s early game, he's slightly stronger. So you have to be careful about picking your spots there. Um, Morgana Jungle. It's like a bad version of a full clear champ. So we'll put it back here. Where all she has is Q and E to provide to her team. Now the E does mess up your combo a little bit. But most of the time you just stat checked her in a way. And or if you get like full charge E and she has a black shield, you just kill her right then. Uh, Rengar is a slight win. Rengar's always get fed. So if he has 20 kills, he might just kill you. The thing is, if he jumps on you, you hold E. So you see his R. You see it's about to run out. You hold E. He jumps on top of you. You knock him back and then you WQ. He's going to empower W to try and heal that up. And you both are gonna stand there, no cooldowns, just autoing until one of you wins, but you have W2. So you're gonna get low, you're gonna heal the fool and you beat him. If he flashes away, bleed will kill him. Um, all in all, if he goes bruiser build though, bruiser build can kite you, but neither one of you can kill each other. So all in all, it's a Briar slight win because you can win the assassin assassin matchup and bruiser can kite you. So slight win. Um, I will say, Ha is the highest their favor, and he might even be hard lose. Um, we're going to put him their favor for now. But all in all, it's just because once he hits six, he can just drop your frenzy by hitting one button. That's it. Um, that's just such a broken way to play the game where he doesn't have to play it. But you can hit R on him to bypass that. So although yours is harder to hit, you do have an option. Um, I prefer doing demon combo in this matchup mostly Which it, again if you didn't see the combo guy, that's when you full charge E and then R or you Q then R um, That I, I think demon combo is the way to play this If you're going to take the fight you need to hit R so they can't just catch you around and you give true sight to your team too So they can help you more which in other situations you can't do that and in cause it just destroys you 
Uh, Gragas is even where you farm so much faster than him, but he can interact in you where if you ever go near him, if he's phase rush, he just ease you away, phase rush it away, and then resets it on his lower cooldowns in you. Um, if you ever troll go too far, he's going to ER you. You're going to fly into his team. Um, so you take farm advantage, and he takes... You can mess it up. But if you play it well, you wait for him to make the play, and then you punish him, you're fine. Talia is their favor. You can always one-tap Talia. The problem is you have to get around the rocks. And it might be even like a little higher, but let's put her top of this. So the idea is that you're going to run towards her. She's going to throw down an EW, and then you're gonna either going to get stunned and by yourself, or she's going to stun you. And then not only did you not kill her, you took half your health and, and or her team just killed you. But if your team gets her spells or she misses her spells, you one tap that champ for free. W near the rocks, but not in them. Run straight through. She runs out of the rocks. You cure her or she stays in the rocks. Wait for him to time out and or just kill her with autos. So slightly her favor. Um, but it's worth noting that it is playable and people think it's much worse than what it actually is. I think Echo's even, just because it's Assassin v Assassin. Your main thing that you want to do in this matchup is try and CC him right before he R's and just break him out. He has to be able to hit R to even play the game. You win early game skirmishes, you're a better early game champ, and you can honestly kill him through like a full charge E in one shot. So, one of those things. It's playable, you have to pick your spots. Um, I think Master Yi is even. I want to put it there in favor, but that's kind of coping. You have a lot of answers for him. People think this matchup's really bad. I haven't had it that bad. I don't know. Um, all in all, it's like better player wins, really. If Master Yi's are beating you, it's because you're wasting your cooldowns and they're not. If you can, so like, it's all interaction. So think of it as he has W and Q and you have Q and E, where if he Q's onto your team, you're going to tap Q and you're going to charge E on him. And that's it. Bam, he dies. You stunned him, you practically confirm your E, and he has no Q to break out of it. And then he probably, after seeing that he gets stunned, probably hits W to try and knock his damage straight back. And that's a free standing target to E. So, that's what Master E players do bad. Now, if he's good, he will run at you and just auto you and do nothing else. He'll just auto you, force you to make the play. So now you're going to have to WQ him, and then he's going to Q. You might drop Frenzy, and then after he comes out of uh, his queue, you're going to be trying to E, and he's going to walk away from it. So, if he starts the fight just running at you, autoing, you lose. So this matchup, if they're good, it goes their favor. If they're bad, it goes even. But all in all, if he ever trolls, goes too far, you just CC him and your team kills him, and it's free. Alright, we're going to get some AP tanks out the way, so we're going to move uh, Zach, Skarner, Holy Bear. Uh, Holy Bear, not really. Um, Rumble. I think that's most of them. Alright, so these three just have enough damage and or CC that you have to play the game like so weird. You never want to be hitting them. And if you are, then you probably lose. Rumble in the jungle just actually out damages you and kills you. You won't see it a lot. And generally speaking, Rumble's like kind of a hard champ for people that don't main it. So you can honestly swap this even, but all in all, if he plays it well, he R's where you're going, you go to his team, he R's that, or if he just plays his, um, his overheat and one taps you, it's tough. But if he doesn't do either one of those two things and he does anything else, you hard win with even. But Zach and Skarner, they're, they're going to tank everything you do. They're going to CC you. You look for a gank, they're going to counter gank it, drag you under turret. Um, you never do enough damage to one tap them. Even when you go to the correct build, you can't ever one tap these champs. They're gonna body block your W. Like to be honest, it might be these matchups might be worse than their favor, but trust me, they're tough. All in all, you want to look to kill his team and let you want him to go to your team and you want to go to his team. Whoever kills the enemy team first wins. That's basically how they play out. Okay, um, Olaf, even. Olaf jungle is not that good, and your 1v1 is both of you at 100 health just waiting to hit your button. He's going to try and hit his W, you're going to hit yours. Whoever has more damage wins. All in all, though, you usually do enough damage with your WQ that you put him into a bad spot where he has to make the play. 
you can E a lot of his damage, and you can try and walk away from his Q. Like, like if you walk away from one of his Qs, you win the matchup completely. So, it's all contingent upon you not getting stuck in his Q loop. Alright, now Rek'Sai is one of those hard if their team is good. Because Rek'Sai players always, like, they pick Rek'Sai and then their draft is like, Renekton mid, Galio, or Renekton top, Galio mid, Nautilus support. Where, like, they're just going to chain CC someone to death every time. Uh, it's just a tough matchup, it really is. Best thing you can do is hope that your team gives you enough space that you can punish one of their engagers. And then you guys can trade back that kill that they might be engaging on. Belveth is hard lose. Belveth, think of Belveth. It's your champ. It's Briar without the lose con. Her E is a better E. Her She has more movement than you. Her W gives her extra movement and a more conformed knockup because knockup's a better CC than stun because you can't tenacity it. And I think her knockup's one second, so 0.15 uh, higher CC. She's an AoE explosion team fight R just like you do. Yours is global, but hers can reset. She's just a better champ than you. Although, I will say the matchup's not impossible. It's just a hard lose one most of the time. Things to look out for is she starts the game at a minute 120. She's going to walk to your Raptors, start your Raptors, do your red, do your Krugs really fast. She does that clear super well. And if you didn't scout that, then she's now up three levels. You did two camps, she did three. And now the game's weird because you have to go to her side of the map and it's messed up. Um, all in all, if you go forward, she's going to try and knock you up. You, you have a linear path. If you try and E, she is a four-way omnidirectional dash to get out of it. Um, it's it's a tough one. You win this by she uses like so you start a fight or your teammate starts a fight. You hop in after she uses E. You Q her E, and then you chomp kill her. She's gonna use E right before she dies. You're going to uh, cancel that and then chomp to get the execute. So it's a tough one. It's playable if ahead, but even or the player is just slightly smart in the matchup. Uh, you're going to get destroyed and it's kind of annoying but it is what it is and then she also does enough damage with kraken to like kill you through it while also having like bruiser items so it's kind of a tough one uh briar slight win is wukong only thing he has in the matchup is um either you standing on three knockup spins and cyclone but if he r's and you e you're gonna knock him away you're gonna time it out and then you're gonna out damage him at the end of it uh, Cyclone can just leave you hitting his clone without you, um, you know, being able to chase the real one. You do have R to bypass that, but all in all, he can just annoy you. Um, most people think Dex destroys us. He doesn't really. Like, if he jumps on you in the jungle, you E towards the wall. Uh, w away from his E that's actually going to stun you. And then just destroy him. He tries to Q away. You use your movement speed and Q to catch up to him. It is what it is. Uh, this one could get moved to if their team is good because their his team is going to try and look on his cooldowns, but most teams aren't doing that right now, so it's pretty fine. Um, Diane is a slight win. She's also one of the full clear champions. The problem with her is that she doesn't do it as well as them, and if she goes forward, she really has no way out. So if she goes forward, you stun, break up her R, your team can spread out. Um, you can you can definitely win it. The problem is. If your team sacks and she gets a four-man R, you lose that fight. And it is what it is. And it's out of your hands. So, um, Viego, I want to put an even. But we're putting their favor. Only because Viego passive is such a game-changing thing. Where, like, he can be 0-10. But if he swaps to your 20-0 no top laner, good luck. Uh, the matchup by itself, without his passive, is even. You can fight him. He can fight you. All in all, you actually win the 1v1. If you invade him, you destroy him. But uh, the Viego effect is real, man. It's real. Uh, Dr. Mundo doesn't do anything to you, and you practically kill him through it. His jungle clear isn't that good, and you match him on any gank. You can proc his passive for your team. Uh, the best thing he can do is waste your time. Maokai is a slight win. You can always kill him, and he can never kill you. If he R's towards your team, you can R his team, because they kind of have a straight line that they want to walk to get to your team that's now getting rooted the only thing that gives him anything in the matchup is his e is annoying and can give away where you are because you're looking to be an assassin most of the time or in assassin spots 
where you're full charging E and he's always going to be checking those bushes. So in a row, uh, Zyra's even she or full clear. Her full clear is really good. The problem is, if she misses E, you one tap her, but if she never misses E, you never get a chance. So eh, full clear. Let's do, let's do even better player wins that really. Um, Evelyn, Evelyn, I think is even. Actually, let's go hard lose, actually. So, like, the matchup is fine when you are two champions. Why is it a hard lose? It's because the moment she gets invis, she pressures all three of your lanes. There's nothing you can do. And most of the time, people aren't pink warding. People are just fighting and, and yelling at you to gank. And they're all so, like, terribly, terrible down bad mental that they're just going to feed her 20 now. I ban her every game. It is what it is. I think the way that she warps the game where she's pressuring everywhere at all times is so cringe. It's like just not fair. Like this needs to be reworked ASAP. Yeah, jungle is a hard win. The only thing the champ can do is buy time with with uh, green green cues. That's it. Ivern is even where if he if you don't engage on him and you try and fight through his shields, he's gonna destroy you. If you engage on him, free. Uh, Trundle. Trundle is a slight win. Now, people think that Trundle always win 1v1s, and he does. There's a lot of times where he does. But all in all, if you're not putting yourself in bad spots, and you just EM away whenever he tries to do this stuff, and or you burst him with your team, you'll be fine. I think we can honestly put it even. Because there's going to be a time where you're going to make a mistake, you're going to walk up, and he's going to blast you. It is what it is. But all in all, he has no get out button, and he doesn't get that tanky either. So you can always punish him. Mord is just a bad version of Zack. Uh, same thing. So you, you beat him in the 1v1. You can one-tap him. His ganks are bad. You out-gank him everything. Same thing with Pantheon. Pantheon, bad clear speed. Okay ganks, but all in all, you do what he does better. Bai is even. Actually, Briar's a slight win. Yeah. Bai is definitely a slight win where you can always beat her in the 1v1. Because if she ever tries to Q or R you, you just charge E. And then you one tap her. It is what it is. The problem is when she's walking forward with her team, you lose. Um, Amumu is a hard win. He can't really do anything. He can't really out gank you. The only thing he has is five man R's, but most people are pretty aware of Amumu nowadays. You beat him in the 1v1. If he goes forward um, at a bad time, you just punish him, kill him. <clears throat> all the support junglers, all they do is dive your top laner at level three. Um, if you match any of their ganks, you destroy them. And they don't clear nearly as fast as you, so you just do what you want. The fear jungle is terrible. Um, Nico, I'm not gonna lie, a slight win. Actually, let's do even. So it's even because when she goes invis, you might get sent at the wrong target, which can just warp a fight and kind of annoy you. You can R to break that, but she can also just use her invis to block your R. Uh, all she has is minion wave cc your team and get really fed but if she ever uses her combo doesn't hit you or you dodge it you one tap her is what it is uh shako shako is even i think i don't really struggle with him ap is kind of annoying but you'll always have sweeper and if you don't let him set up like if you have good fundamentals you'll beat shako if he goes ad you probably just outburst him he cues on to you if you knew that it was coming you charge e even if you don't even knock him away. But now he's queued in. You're going to E him, WQ, do as much damage as possible. And then you just, you know, see which one's the real one and kill him. He usually doesn't even do enough damage to kill you. Um, so there's two Udiers here. Uh, Warwick is just a bad version of your champ. Um, you both do the same thing. It is what it is. Not really anything. He tries to damage redu reduce, so if he hits E and tries to stand on you, you hit E. He fears you, you knock him back, and then you fight. You guys play a damage race, but you're going to win it. Uh, Nunu is is fine. Um, it's probably a hard win. Only thing he can do is kill your teammates. If you're ever on the same screen as him, you CC him, destroy him. You can force him to use R with J UW towards him. He's forced to R. You can just Q his R. Bam, matchup over, dead. You can tank the snowball and just E towards E him away too. And it's not even that bad. 
Talon, if you're ever in a bush and he jumps over the wall, what are you going to do? Watch my watch my shorts. You eat him into the wall. You have a word over the wall. You see him coming to jump over. Eat him into the wall. Play the assassin assassin matchup. You just kill him. You do more damage. Giovanna does nothing at all times. So Giovanna is their favor, actually. She can CC you. She can make plays on your team. And you can actually kill her. If she goes Aftershock 2, uh, you actually just can't trade back. So it is what it is. Uh, Bully Bear's even, I'll say. He is kind of a bad jungler. But the ability to turn off turrets and make plays like that, if they're a really smart uh, Bully Bear player, you actually lose. Uh, Zed jungle is terrible, hard win. You're just assassin, assassin, you win. Silas jungle, if he is way better than you, he's just got an off-stream follow. Thank you, Ashran. If he, so, the assassin, assassin matchups, if they if they're outplaying you, you're gonna lose. It is what it is. But uh, all in all, it's not that bad. All right, so there you go. There's the current th my current thoughts on the jungle matchups. I think sometimes these things, like this is just a one take, say it all and go. Although there's a lot of legitimacy behind these things, I think that this is pretty fair. I think these matchups are insanely hard. I think these matchups can be very cringe. These people that full clear Enigma you, uh, it's like super tough to play against that, that play style. Their favor, these champs all have a way to beat you. Uh, the even matchups are the weirder champs that, like, if they mess up their own thing, you destroy them. The slight wins are people that, like, most of the time you just walk forward and they explode. And the hard wins are people that usually have no chance against you. Like, unless they truly outplay you 40 times over, uh, there's really nothing to do. The list is ordered from their favor up, by the way. Down here, it's a toss-up. It's just player skill. Other than that, you guys have a good day, and thank you so much for watching. Peace!